I don't want to play jobs for a period of time. I've already figured that out. I don't know how he gets uh, two and sometimes three messages a week ready. This is, uh, this is not fun. This is the first time I've ever had the opportunity to do that. But I would like to have him in charge of recruiting for the why. <laughs> good and it come our entire church. Um, when he approached me, you know, when we talked about it at staff meeting about the possibility of uh, uh, Baptist men's days, which in places at first, I said, no, let's, what did we do last year? What did you need? Well, let's get into it. And, uh, but the more I thought about it, the more I said, okay, I have never done that before. I have many times brought a Wednesday night <coughs> You have lived in youth groups many times, but never in my 45 years been asked to stand up on a Sunday morning and uh, try to uh, bring a message. I hesitate to use the word preach. But uh, anyhow, I, I thought about it a while, and, and uh, I believe God laid on my heart to go ahead and, and do this one time, but uh, this is not my career, so don't judge me. Right <laughs> Somebody asked me what was I was going to speak on. I said, well, pigs. I've got to talk more talk more about pigs. And uh, I think some of them were kind of halfway believing that. Some thought I was joking. But it really is true. Uh, I fact, they brought some visual aids this morning. You know, when it snows in our house, what we like to do is uh, work jigsaw puzzles. That's, uh, and during this, all this last snow, we have put together several of them. And uh, the last one that we just completed, we glued it together here. And maybe it'll stay glued. If it doesn't, that's okay. Put it back together again. That's the fun of it. But it's got all kind of pigs in it. So I'm going to prop it up here. You can't see it from back there. That's okay. But it just lets you know that it's up here. But uh, I had my wife count all the pigs in this puzzle last night. And uh, she didn't miscount anywhere. There's 130 different pigs in this jigsaw puzzle. And so I've got a story about each and every one of them. <laughs> no, okay, not really. Um, I have a box. I have a visual in here that I can use. But uh, <clears throat> I do have some stories to share with you. Now, I know in preaching hard this many times, you're supposed to have three points on the point. So I should have talked about the three little pigs. But as long as I, long-winded as I am, it's going to be more like eight little pigs, okay? And um, no point. No. <laughs> eight pigs and no point. Um, but I guess you might call this which pig are you? I'm not sure. Uh, I will be using some scripture. Two or three things, you know, somebody asked me, said, well, nothing in the Bible about pigs. Oh, it really is. Uh, God cast the demons out of the man into the swine. They ran into the water. There's, there's several references uh, to swine in the Bible. But I won't be using those this morning. So let's start with pig number one. And, you know, I looked on this 130 pigs here and tried to identify which pig went with which point I was making here. You know, and some of them, some of them are really clear. There's one here, and you can't see this after the service you would, but he's got on a hat, and he's got on a black leather jacket. And maybe this, this pig is the one I'm talking about, because this, this is not really a story, this is saying that it goes like this. Never wrestle with a pig, because you both get dirty and the pig likes it. You know, you think about that and you say, well, yeah, I guess. But no, it's really true. And I'm afraid that's the way it is in our world. But now this is the world's thought process. If what I'm doing is not okay, then I want to bring as many other people down into the mud with me as I can. I'll feel I think this is the way the world looks right now. It's the world's mindset. You know, if I can't justify my own actions, then I want to get others to join in with me so that I'll feel better. Especially you. <laughs> people, I think there are just so many out there that want to say, hey, this is okay because everybody is doing it. Come on. Be miserable with me. Get in this mud with me. And so I think this pig kind of represents the world here. He's got on a black leather jacket, and it's the world's mindset. Uh, sometimes we can get so dirty, so muddy, 
and so caught up in the world we love that we may not even recognize good things when we see it. That brings us to pig number two. Now, Gene Ingram shared this, this story with me when the, before the football season started, and I think it's real appropriate then, it? not quite as uh, appropriate now, but uh, I think this is the pig down here that kind of goes from this story down in the left hand corner. He's holding up a watermelon over his head. Why does a pig need to hold up a watermelon over his head? Well, I'm not sure. But Gene told me this story. He said a man went into a pizza hut, and uh, probably here in northwest Arkansas somewhere, I'm not sure. <clears throat> he said, uh, the pizza hut owner up there said, hey, we'll bring a pig in here. He said, no, sir, not on that. The health department will never let us do that. He said, uh, oh, but he's a trained pig. He said, he won't cause any trouble. And he said, I just want to come in eat some pizza, watch the rest of my game, I'm next on TV today. And he said, well, yes, we do have a big screen TV, we're going to all watch it, but I, we can't allow the pig. And he said, no, trust me, this pig is a real racetrack player. You know, and he has been, you know, he's a trained pig, he does all kinds of neat tricks, he'll entertain any customers, they're going to love it. And the only thing about it, he says, well, okay, but now if he causes any trouble, I'm going to have to send you out. Agreed. Great. So a man came on in, caught his pig. The racetrack game started, it kicked off. Arkansas recovered the pump. That pig, he, he jumped down on the floor, jumped around three times, stood up and signaled, you know, Arkansas ball. I looked at him. Well, this is impressive, you know. So a few minutes later, you know, they're they going on, and Arkansas makes a first down. That pig in, he runs around a couple of tables, jumps up, you know, and signals, first down. Everybody's beginning to think, wow, this is an impressive pig here. So I might as well ask him, said, man, what, you know, what does he do when Arkansas makes a touchdown? He said, well, I don't know, I haven't had him long enough. <laughs> <laughs> Before the season started, that was really not true. And even down here at the end of the season, I felt like that sometimes. But I think that's the way we are. Sometimes we get caught up in the minor things in life. And we don't recognize a big opportunity when it comes along in our Christian life. <clears throat> we spend so much time, of, uh, so much of our time working at things that really don't matter very much. And then we miss opportunities to do the things that we really do. Um, when I was back at Arkansas Tech, I went there in 1968 to 72. And they did the same time there that I did. And uh, she always studied, but I was too smart, you know. Uh, I was uh, captain, president of the chess club. Uh, we beat the University of Arkansas in the first match that they'd ever lost when I played for Arkansas Tech. And I was too smart to spend the time studying what she did. You know? uh, I make a joke now, my son and I went over and played some ping pong, but uh, he's learned a little ping pong. And, uh, I beat him several times, and he said, man, how, you know, I don't understand that, that back end. How do you do that? I said, well, I played a lot of ping pong in college, and I had the grades to prove it. You know, and I laughed. Never failed a course. Never failed a course. Now, I made some Ds in ROTC. I made some Ds in the courses that I didn't care about. You know, but I wanted to play ping pong. I wanted to play chess. And I wanted to sit in the dorm and, and uh, play television trivia game. You know, I can sing you the entire thing on 554, where are you? That's really valuable to me. You know? And so I spent a lot of time playing ping pong and chess and trivia, and I'm still pretty good at all those things. I'm still real good. And I'm still real smart. But since I moved up here to Spring, though, you know, people told me, said, well, you're right about the University of Arkansas, you're going to get your master's degree. I said, you know, you get a big pay raise in Spring, that's going to get your master's degree. I said, you're right. I need to do that. Got to check it into it a little bit. The National Guard has a program that will pay for me to go get my master's degree. I won't even have to pay. They're going to pay me to go to school. Can you imagine that? How fortunate. I said, wow, this is a great deal. Here I am, look, close to the university. I got there to pay me to get my master's. So probably we went over there to try to register me and get 
graduate program. You got the form, get ready to fill it all out. You got notification from the Army that the money is there for anybody to school. I'm over there in the registrar's office filling out the papers. Now, by the way, she says, uh, to be a military graduate school, you do have to have a 2.7 grade point average for this college. You have it, don't you? So, well, I can beat you a ping pong. <laughs> I didn't fail any courses. I never had to take anything over. But, but do you have a 2.7, sir? Well, well, no, I don't. I have a 2.6. But that's close. So you see, I spent a lot of time working on little things. When a big opportunity came along, I would. So <clears throat> some of you say, well, but Bob, I see my opportunity. And I just don't have time. I just, I just do not have time to commit to God, right? to, to the church, right? to various people. I don't have time. We had a little play a little time game last night at our choir function. But when I was in, in college, Gene Witherspoon told this story. He was my college manager. This is pick number three. He said a man was driving along out on the country road. And he looked over and he saw a very unusual sight. He said he saw a farmer holding a pig up with both hands, letting him eat apples off the tree. He said, I don't know if I've ever seen that before. Hey, he pull up. The rural area, everybody grew up around him. He says, hey, what's going on? The farmer said, oh, I'm just, uh, Feed my pig these old apples that I don't want. He said, uh, Well, you could just pull off apples you don't want. Put them down on the ground. He said, Yeah, I can do that. He said, But I'm just holding them up here. He said, Well, but doesn't that take a lot of time? And the farmer said, Ah, what's time to pig? <laughs> You know, I think the man missed the point. <laughs> what well, the pig's time the guy was asking about was his time. He and the pig both had the same amount of time, 24 hours of the day. <clears throat> but they were wasting somebody's effort by both of them working on a job that one of them could have easily done. I think sometimes God knocks the apples off on the ground for us to eat. And we still want him to pick us up and hold us up there for a week. You know, <clears throat> Daniel is, is my 18-year-old uh, son, and if he comes to me, or, uh, he comes to me with a problem, I'll be the first to help him on this problem. Just recently, uh, I've had a lot of fun teaching how to tie a tie. He was in college and never having to wear ties a lot. And just when we didn't wear ties a lot, in his senior year at Springdale, he didn't wear ties a lot. I got to wear I tied it for him. Well, finally, it was decided I would teach him how to do it. He was wearing ties on us. And I did. And he really he, he got it. And I enjoyed teaching. And he came to the right hand. I have his time. He said, that's great. That's really good. But now Daniel had come to me and said, Dad, tie my shoes. It wouldn't be that I didn't love him. I would say, are you kidding? I taught you how to tie your shoes, well, 15, 16, 18 years ago. I'm not teaching you how to tie your shoes. Well, if God is the perfect parent to us, why don't we bother with things that he's already taught us how to do? You know, I think too many times we ask God to help us on things that, that we can do for ourselves. We should do it for ourselves. Things that God taught us long ago. Everybody's got the same amount of time, 24 hours in a day. And our time is really valuable to us. Your time is valuable to you. My time is valuable to me. We don't seem to have enough of it. But how much of it are we really giving? How much of it are we giving to very strict church? How much of it are we giving to our families? Sometimes we need to take time just to look around. Sometimes God sends us messages. We don't even take time to look. We're so caught up in the things that we're doing. That brings us to pig number four. A man's out for a drive on a Sunday afternoon. He's got a 
beautiful new red convertible, and he's enjoying the uh, hills. Maybe like the kind of highway uh, 7, 71. He's enjoying the scenery. He's driving along, and as he rounds a curve, a young lady comes by in her car, obviously well out of control. Almost runs him off the road. Not only that, when she goes past him, she yells at him, Pig! 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 So he turns and yells at her, You old sow! <laughs> goes around the corner and gets a pig. <laughs> Sometimes Christian people warn us about what's in the road ahead. We get mad. Don't you think God warns us sometimes and we misinterpret his warnings? We take it as criticism when it's really a warning of what's up ahead. God gives us warnings and we need to heed those warnings and obey. <clears throat> the Bible makes it clear that we need to obey. So obedience takes us to pick up the pie. The scripture I'm going to use for that is Deuteronomy 11, 26 through 28. You don't have to turn. In a moment, I am going to ask you to turn. But have this one right here, I'll read for you. Verse 26 says, Behold, I set before you this day a blessing and a curse. A blessing if you obey the commandments of the Lord your God, which I command you this day. And a curse if you will not obey the commandments of the Lord your God. You obey you can know about it. It's up to you. <clears throat> well, a state policeman is sitting along the side of the road, and a man comes by at 75 miles an hour. So he's obviously speeding. Not only that, what makes this, this vehicle unusual is that sitting in the driver's seat with his head out the window is a pig. State policeman says, I've never seen that before, so flips on the blue lights, here he goes. Okay. He finally gets the man stopped. He says, sir, you're driving 75 miles an hour. Now, with that, are you aware of the pig sticking his head out the window? He said, oh, yes, officer. Gosh, I'm, I'm, I'm real sorry. He said, let me explain. <coughs> it was like this. I was back there driving along behind this pig truck. And said, the truck hit a bump, and this pig fell off. He said, you might see him come by here. I don't know. He said, the pig hit the ground. He was obviously stunned. He got up, kind of shook himself off. Uh, I stopped, didn't want to run over it. said, I looked ahead. The truck was speeding off. I thought, well, I'll, I'll take the pig. You know, back. I'll catch the truck. I'll get it to the point. So he said, I, I set the pig here, and I, I'm trying to catch up with it. State so policeman said, well, now, you've got me in a real dilemma here. I, I don't know what to do. It seems like you're trying to do the right thing, but I can't allow you to drive 75 miles an hour. Okay, here's what I want you to do. If you want to do what's right, you take the pig to the city. The man said, okay. The officer let him go. The next day, the officer's there at his post again. Here comes the car again. The pig's still sitting in the window. He said, well, that's it. Well, he turned on the blue light. He pulled the door. He said, I don't hear anything. Not a thing. But, but, but officer, he said, no. Nah. He said, you lied to me yesterday. He said, I'm not listening to any of your stories today. He said, but, but officer, I probably He said, no, no. I told you if you wanted to do the right thing, you'd take the pig to the zoo. He said, officer, I did that. He said, we had a great time today. We were six months. <laughs> He really think he took the pig to the zoo or something? No, he was caught not away in what the police were told him. We have perfected the art of misunderstanding. You know, like the man in that story. When we do not obey God and He catches us, we will complain. Oh my God, I, I didn't, I didn't quite understand. Because you know, when we do understand. <clears throat> We've got to obey. And when we obey, that means sacrifice. Sometimes we're willing to sacrifice while we're right about it. That brings us to number six. I think somebody in this church told me this story too. We'll hurt you here again. 
scripture I'm going to use is Ecclesiastes 9 2. All things come alike to all. There is one event to the righteous and one to the wicked. One to the good, one to the clean, one to the unclean, and to him that sacrifices, and to him that sacrifices not. What does that say? You know, no matter how we live, good and bad are both going to happen to us. So we can't say, well, God, since I've sacrificed to you, please be good to me. He will be good to us eternally. But it does not guarantee us that we're going to win the lottery tomorrow. Or that we're never going to lose any of our hair. You know, God doesn't promise that just because we sacrifice that we will fare better than those who don't in this life. So here's pig number six. A man goes to visit a relative of his. He goes out to his farm. He notices that there's a pig out there with the others. It has a peg leg. A three-legged pig. Got a peg leg built on, dragging it around, hobbling around. He asks his, his brother, he says, man, look at that peg leg pig. He says, let me tell you about that pig. He said, my house was on fire one time. He said, that pig came and scratched at the door, made noises till it woke me up, and I was able to get my family out of the house from the fire. He said, that pig could save all of us. He said, hey, not only that, let me tell you this. He said, one time the tractor turned on me, and that pig <coughs> came back to the house and got my wife. I brought her out there in front of my son. I got down from that tractor. He said, that pig has saved my life twice. And he said, well, well Greg, he said, that's still not explain how, how you got a peg leg like that. And he said, man, you got a pig like that, so you don't just eat him all at once. <laughs> <laughs> Jonah 2 9 says, But I will sacrifice unto thee with the voice of the thanksgiving. Now, you know, that pig's probably pretty proud of what he done. But do you think at the time that he was giving that leg to the farmer that he gave it with the voice of thanksgiving? Yeah. Probably drug him in there, squealing, chopped that leg off, had him something to eat. <clears throat> but you know what? Once it was done, and he put that peg leg on. I bet he strutted around everywhere to show how much he had sacrificed to pay the over what I paid. A sacrifice that we do not give, we do not give willingly, is not a sacrifice. Something that somebody takes from us is not a sacrifice. A good friend of mine in the Jessica Baptist Church name was Aubrey Hospital. Aubrey served as a chaplain in World War II. And one of his chaplain's duties was as soldiers came back home with disabilities when they were released from duty to come back home, was that he was to go with the families and be there with them when they were the sold. He was also given the assignment of that time to be with families when they were told of the death of their children. But when they would come back home alive, he was always there to, to let the family and the soldier meet. I never will forget him telling me an example. One time, he was with a family and they were meet, to meet the son. They had no idea what his problem was when I was being released from the military. He had no idea as the chaplain had not told him. As the plane landed and several people texted him, they invited him and the family to come up. They said, you can, you can meet your son, he's still on the point. They went to the back, and as they walked down the aisle of the plane, the closer they got, it was more obvious to the mother and the sister and the father that he did not have a leg. His right leg was missing. They said, as they got there, the mother said, son, you've lost your leg, you've lost your leg. She burst into tears. And Brother Hostel said, the boy said, no, Mom, I didn't lose my leg. I gave it so that you, sister, and dad could have the freedom to be more than You know, when Christ went to the cross, they didn't take his life from him. He gave it. Amen. He sacrificed willingly. <coughs> But we want to brag about how much we've given to the Lord instead of how much we could give. That brings us to pig number seven. <clears throat> pig and a chicken are walking down the road. It's early in the morning. They smell ham and eggs. 
chicken says, man, isn't it great what we can do for mankind? They walk on a little further, smell sausage and eggs. Chicken says it again. Says, well, there it is again. Isn't it great what we can do for mankind? <laughs> they go on a little bit further, they smell bacon and eggs. Chicken says, just wonderful what we do for mankind. He says, look, for you, partner, it's a daily routine. For me, that's a real commitment. <laughs> You know, when we're really committed, we're willing to give everything. When God wants us to do something, I get, off, I get the feeling that sometimes we're this way. We pray, Lord, show me what you want me to do. And you want God to write it out on a contract, and you want to read that contract over, and you want to say, okay, Lord, I'll do this. I'm going to do what you want me to do. And you sign the bottom. People, Baptist men, I don't believe that's God's will for us. I think God wants you to sign the bottom of the paper and let him put it in the church. Whatever God wants you to do is what you should be willing and committed to do. I can't get can't have to think that someday in heaven, you know, I'm going to brag just a little bit. Oh, I did, you know, I worked in the church for so long. And I'm going to be talking to Christ and say, isn't it great what we do for mankind, what we did for mankind? And Christ will say, Bob, for you it's just a daily routine. For me, it's just a daily routine. You know? So, if before we get to heaven, if we want to change that commitment, if we want to get that committed in our heart, we probably don't have enough willpower to do it either. It's going to take some extra. We're going to need some magic. That brings us to pig number eight. There was a little girl who had a pet pig, and she was so proud of it, and she cleaned it all up beautifully. I think the pet pig is right up here at the top. It's got on a dress. And she put a dress on it and a beautiful ribbon on it, and she took it outside the toilet. And the pig went straight from there to my and it did what pigs did. It got muddy, filthy muddy. And so that later lad, she brought it back inside. She cleaned it up again. She put it on some different clothes. She put another pretty ribbon on it, a little powder on it, made it smell pretty. Took it back outside and played again. Repeat performance. As soon as the pig could get away, pressed up. It's blown in the dirt, mud. She became real upset. She sat down and cried. And magically, her fairy godmother appeared and said, What's wrong, little girl? And she said, My pig, my beautiful pet pig, I cleaned him up so pretty, and all he wants to do is get dirty. And so the fairy godmother magically instilled in the pig the nature of the deer. And she said, Now, and the little girl put it in and she cleaned him up and she put a new ribbon on it and she brought him out and with the nature of the deer he walked slowly, he stayed beside her and he never got dirty once. You know, it's going to take magic. We don't have a fairy godmother, but we've got better than that. We've got Jesus Christ. Amen. Now turn to 2 Corinthians 5, 7. This is my one scripture for today. Second Corinthians five seventeen. This is one of my favorite verses. This I need. Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. The pig is to be. It had its nature change. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things are become new. If you want to have your nature changed. It's going to take magic. Better than a fairy godmother, it's going to take Jesus Christ. <coughs> so, as we close now, which pig are you? Gave you a lot of choices there. Maybe you're none of those. I hope you're not like pig number one. Likes to wrestle in the mud. Pull everybody else down in there with you. 
Or maybe you're like pig number two. You're trying to do all sorts of things for small things that don't mean a lot. And then when the touchdown comes along, you don't have a clue what to do. When the big opportunity is there. Or maybe you're like a pig that was being held in the air to eat the apples. Not caring you know, how much time of somebody else's he was taking up. Or maybe you're like the man that was that was caught off guard with the warning of the pig in the road. He interpreted it as an insult. And he responded with one of his own. Or maybe you're like the man that took the pig to Six Flags into the zoo. You know full well what God wants you to do. But you put him off by claiming you're, you're not quite sure of God's will. You, you don't quite understand. Or maybe you're like the peg leg pig that likes to strut around on your artificial leg and brag about how much you've given God instead of how much you could do. Or maybe you're like the pig in the chicken walking down the road. Maybe you really have made a total commitment to God. That pig Or maybe you're a chicken. Or maybe you're like the pig with the old nature. If you've accepted Jesus Christ, You've got better than the nature of the deer inside. You've got Jesus living in you. But if you have not you can do that anytime. We are here to talk to you. We are David's here that we're talking to you. We have good Christian ladies that we talk to you and tell you how Christ came into their life magically and that their old sin nature was changed to something else. So Jesus can magically change you from whichever big you are to whichever one. He wants you to be. Amen. Amen. Let's stand. Brother Richard, what are we going to say this morning?